Everybody, thanks for checking out the Chris Gethard Show podcast. It's really um, cool that you're checking this out. We're about to do, I think, the dumbest show we've done in years. His life would be trash! And you better believe I'm trashed. <laughs> we are, uh, scrappy trash people. What's the point of this show? I just turned it on. We've always been with we've this show. We've always been trash people. We will always be trash people. It's true. This doesn't feel real. Live from my grandmother's basement, we have got to keep this one snappy because we're recording on a Wednesday, which means that in exactly one hour, Josh Sharp is going to be on CGP. Are you excited, Robin? Oh, yeah. Super excited. I'm Emily Pineapple. That was Judge Robin. And who else do we have here? I'm Forrest. I'm Judge Robin. I'm Forrest, the keeper of the canon. Don't step on me. I, I mean, I think that we know who's more important now. Um, you can both fight out between you who's who. But yeah, we got to be snappy because it's a Wednesday. And finally, things are happening live on Wednesday nights again, which is ooh, super ooh. fun for everyone. Uh, yes, today we're discussing episode 12 of, uh, the Chris Gethard show on public access because we are the podcast that does that. We discuss those episodes. We review them for you. We recap them mostly also. And we also really flub our intros because we're really harried because, oh my God, Josh Sharp tonight. I can't wait to see his talk shows. Right? Yeah, there's going to be three of them. By the time anyone is listening to this, it will have been weeks, weeks since this happened. Hello from the distant past and the mists of history. (laughs) Does it look any better where you are? We hope so. All right. Yeah, so we're discussing episode 12. It's the Finelli birthday episode, which happened September 7th, 2011. My birthday is September 6th. Is that his actual birthday? I don't know that. I think we're birthday buddies. I think I might be birthday buddies with Don Finelli. I think the seventh is birthday, so you're like birthday neighbors. We might be. Um, the musical guest today has been fucking canceled because a bunch of ladies came forward uh, about bullshit that he pulled. His name is Hot Sugar. Um, but instead, we're going to promote some of the awesome ladies uh, who were super brave and brought all that to life. Uh, he's actually been canceled, like his rep- record label, et cetera, dropped him. Um, yeah. The panel included Chris Gethard, Shannon O'Neill, Bethany Hall, The Human Fish, Random Jean, Don Finelli, Jackie Jennings. It was her first time on the show. Uh, and she's uh, the fan whose house they were going to perform at. And Jesse Lee, who makes a midway through the show appearance. Um, the theme for the game was to give Don Finelli gifts. Uh, Chris invited anyone in New York to give him gifts. And one of those gifts could be the cat, the new cat that's right now behind Judge Robin, who we can see in the webcam. He's so cute. I got a new cat. He's pretty cute. His, his name is Bastion. No, his name is Butt Cat. <laughs> So Butt Cat might make some noise throughout this episode. <laughs> I w- I'm just, I've got a like, disclaimer. I was going to close the door, but um, his litter box is in here and he's already shit in the room once. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we know that keeping the cat out of the room tends to make more noise than just letting it come in because it's going to be like, why can't I go in there? Why can't I go in there? Why can't I go in there? Like right now, Gatsby's just like asleep behind me, chilling. Gatsby's my cat. He's a better cat. Unless you remember the time he knocked our mixer, mixer completely, off. Are completely off and caused some hilarious hijinks. So. They were hilarious. Um, but I really want to watch Josh Sharp at 8 o'clock yeah, tonight. So, let's, let's so not. we're going to talk about the episode and not Our Cats. That will be on the companion podcast, Our Cats. I don't know. Trash Cats. Chat and Cats. Chat and Cats. <laughs> the theme for the call uh, was... Why is Don Finelli a great guy? And what was your best or worst birthday? Uh, do either of you have a best or worst birthday? I think my best one was at uh, the fraternity that you were in, Robin. This was after mm. your time. But my last year of college, because uh, we hung out there a lot, one of our friends there like organized a whole party for me. And that was pretty fun. Like I had a good uh, party college year. I did a I did a, a Robin theme party where everyone dressed <laughs> up in flannel and 
shave their uh, facial hair so it looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Forrest? I think my worst was I. So it was my birthday is in November, and I decided I should have a bonfire birthday. Mm. And uh, two people showed up, much like Chris's, and it then took a good turn and became one of my better birthdays because me and the two people who went abandoned the bonfire idea entirely and drove all the way up to San Francisco to go see the Big Lebowski at a midnight movie. And it was great. It was a wonderful one, but it started out the worst and ended up better. Yeah. I don't Can know. I say that is like, that is like my biggest fear is to throw a birthday party and no one show up. See, I've, I've faced that fear and overcome it. And so I'm a stronger <laughs> person now than I was back then. <laughs> um, but getting into the episode, this might be the first time that Chris calls the LLC the greatest band in public access. We're not sure, but it probably was. It definitely sounds like he's sort of thinking of it for the first time. There was also um, a kerfuffle at the beginning of the show. Random Gene was late. Random Gene was late for the first time. If Random Gene isn't here, she's almost definitely dead. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was really concerned. She just wasn't two hours early the way that she usually is. To be honest, I would probably arrive pretty early for that show if I was on that show and not at all involved in the making of that show because I'd be like, shit, like what's going to go wrong that's going to like require humans on hand. Um, But yeah, Uh, the human fish had... His first question, Sam Kinison versus Sam Rockwell. Who are these people, Forrest? I assume you know. Sam Kinison is a comedian from the 80s who's very shouty, just very intense yelling, and he's not my my favorite. Um, And then Sam Rockwell is a great actor who was Guy in Galaxy Quest. He was Justin Hammer in Iron Man 2, and he starred in Moon. And is great in the movie Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, where he plays a game show host who's secretly a CIA operative. And you should definitely Hmm. check that out if you haven't seen it. Well, the human fish thinks that Sam Kinison wins. Uh, But, yeah. That's that's just like his opinion, man. That's just his opinion, (laughs) man. Uh, Noah Foreman, who... What's his deal, Forrest? He's one of the head writers of The Chris Gethard Show, Okay, that's why I know him and his name. Yeah. Well, he wasn't there that night, but he was controlling a monitor that was set up behind the panel where he could send messages, text and photo messages uh, to the cast. This was sort of a precursor to people being able to Skype in. Oh, yeah. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. I was like, wow, they're doing it. Um, But at this point, Chris announces... That is actually the Don Finelli episode. He hadn't told Don Finelli that it was going to be an episode entirely about his birthday. Uh, Don Finelli. The big bad buck of Bergen County, New Jersey. As well as many other names that that Chris came up with. Um, And Don was super excited, as I would be, because, I don't know, that's a really nice thing of Chris to do. I think, and also maybe trying to get him back on the show because he was on like the first couple of episodes and then wasn't around, had better things to do on a Wednesday night, I guess. (laughs) It's Uh, probably out getting puss puss. (laughs) Probably out getting puss puss. (laughs) Um, Chris shares with us his worst birthday Again, yeah, it was it was like yours, Forrest. It was in the third grade, and Chris went to a mostly Jewish school, and his uh, birthday is in the summer, and many Jewish kids, not me, uh, go to Jew camp. They go to summer camp, uh, like, at to learn about Jewish things. I did it as an adult with a bunch of adults, and it was really fun. I really wish I that I... I that. I always went to, like, the Christian camp for some reason. What? Yeah, I, I mean, always went to, like, the YMCA. You were also not bar mitzvahed, though. We're like, we're we're in a we're in a different classification okay. of Jew. I get it. I'm I'm Jewish. We're Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, only two of the kids he invited came because uh, they were all at summer camp, and one of the other ones was one of the only other Catholic kids mm. at that school. My party didn't have that that excuse. They just had better things to do. 
And that's when Jackie comes on the show and uh, uh, says that she is giving Don the gift of human emotion because he is an actor and he is emoting all of the time. So she is going to cry for him. She is going to be sad uh, and and cry. She's going to listen to watch sad videos on a laptop. This is the corner. What kind of corner is it? Yeah, it's the corner of sadness. Uh, it sounds like something that, like, it's a punishment. Like, you have to go and watch sad things. Yeah, I could totally have seen that being a punishment thing, like you were saying, like on the true TV version. Oh, I just meant for, like, children and oh. humans in general when they misbehave. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess that could be. Yeah, maybe we just got parenting advice on the show. <laughs> it's, like, kind of fucked up. But... <laughs> I don't even know. Um, The first caller that we had of the night was Alyssa. We checked in with Alyssa. Alyssa, the cool 15-year-old who is into comedy and is now one of the Debras of Three Busy Debras, which you'll be able to see eventually on True TV. Was that your cat? He's been quiet all day, and the moment I start recording, he's fucking going nuts. (laughs) He has things to say about Alyssa. He wants to check in with her. Um, I think your cat wants to be an influencer. <laughs> um, but she uh, started school. She's concerned about a math teacher uh, who said that he doesn't like his students, or they said, I think it might be a woman, who doesn't like her students. Um, Alyssa starts saying, like, oh, I have this math teacher who, and Shannon goes, fucked you, <laughs> which <laughs> I couldn't hear properly. <laughs> in like the audio so i'm like what did she say fuck you like fuck you Alyssa. that's weird but yeah she (laughs) went real far with that one um and talks about how she doesn't like math when dawn offers to help her with her homework and he's like oh yeah like i'll give you my email off air to help you with your homework. Uh, he's like, hey, I'll give you my email address <laughs> off air. Alyssa. Contact me, I'm an engineer. <laughs> yeah, that's Shannon's rendition of that moment. Um, I say that was a lot creepier than what I said. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> Which like it, it would have been, except that it was so obviously like Don just like, oh, I can help you with math homework. I have an engineering degree. I was like, aw. He's such a sweetheart. Yeah, it didn't even occur to me to think of it as creepy until Shannon highlighted how creepy it could have sounded. I also call bullshit. I also have an engineering degree. I could not help anyone with math and work. <laughs> um, we, we don't we don't use that shit after like like middle school. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> Still can't do addition. That's what computers are for and calculators and phones. Uh, But Gene also offers to help via Twitter. So anyone out there who has a math question, I urge you to tweet at random Gene because she did AP classes all through high school. Uh, She got straight A's also, which I didn't get in math. So go random Gene Uh, and Alyssa. I'm just going to throw it out there, you know, after like, after you graduate high school, it's really tacky to bring up like your high school grades. Sounds like someone didn't get good grades in high school. Yeah. I got great grades in high school. Thank why you. Why, <laughs> we, why would you bring that up? That's so tacky. Yeah, that's kind of tacky, Robin. <laughs> Sorry, I'm half distracted. My like cat just figured out how to open the closet and <laughs> it's probably shitting on all my clothes right now. <laughs> <laughs> This is amazing. <laughs> We're not sure if he knows how to use the litter box yet. Where has he been pooping? He's only pooped once and it was in a plastic bag in the kitchen. Let's not keep talking about the cats. Let's focus on the show. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Look, cat shit is an important and integral part of the Chris Gethard show. Um, <laughs> but also an integral part was that Alyssa saw John Mulaney's comedy special, New in Town, Um, And really liked it, of course, because it's a John Mulaney special. Who doesn't like those? And Shannon ended the call. uh, Alyssa, something just exploded four feet away from my head. A piece of equipment just exploded. Shut myself in the vagina, Alyssa. 
I have no idea what was happening. The camera was focused on, I think, Chris. And then we hear this loud, like, clattering noise. And then Shannon's just screaming about having shot herself in the vagina. <laughs> Pretty great. My guess is that something got knocked down on stage or the bat hit something or, you know. Something happened. But Shannon, quick-witted as always, uh, used that as an opportunity to troll Chris. Because yes. that's really who she's trolling here. <laughs> um, and we get... Uh, Don gets his first gift of the night from Banana Man. Banana Man sitting in the front row gave him a tiara. Um, He was also given coasters that say Don's Bar. And a lady in a chicken head, one of those like creepy anatomical chicken head masks, uh, gave him a bottle of wine and chocolate, which was very nice of her. Quite romantic. Um, We get... Our second caller, um, who kind of babbles for a while. This was a person who had never seen the show before, yeah. which we're getting fewer and fewer calls from people who are just like watching MNN and are like, what the fuck is this? But yeah, his birthday's on 9-11. I kept thinking he was setting up for some kind of creative swerve with it. Like nah. his birthday was 9-11, but the worst one was like... 2005 when he got broken up with or something but no there's no clever joke there for him nope he doesn't celebrate birthdays and uh thinks the show is nuts which it is Uh, human fish gives don the greatest gift special k red berries as well as a a car i'm sorry it's a good cereal it is a good cereal. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a question of uh, Special K Red Berries versus every other kind of cereal, and Red Berries won. Red berries. Human it's fish. Special K Red jumping. Berries versus every other cereal. <clears throat> Special K Red Berries. Okay. And this is a. Uh, I'm sorry. It's objectively false. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is better. I'm sorry. The hum- the human fish decided that the taste you can see it doesn't win. It's not as nutritious. I mean, as nutritious okay, as if, like if you're flattened corn. You're not eating cereal anyway. I mean, you can eat two bowls of Special K. That's what they put on their boxes. It was diet advice. You have for breakfast, your bowl of Special K. For lunch, your bowl of Special K. And for dinner, a normal ass dinner. Yes. Special K. For dinner, you do a bunch of Special K. (laughs) (laughs) And that's how you lose weight. (laughs) Dieting advice from a cereal box. Special K is ketamine, by the way, for all you who don't know. Whatever. Urban Dictionary. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, good for people. Well, when used inside of a hospital uh, administered, it's good for people with depression. It's kind of like a breakthrough depression treatment. It's also good for tranquilizing horses, I believe. Yes, that too. Yeah. Um, Jackie has been watching Father of the Bride, but the Wi-Fi doesn't work well in the studio. Big surprise. Uh, so she's been listening to Danny Boy <laughs> on repeat. And that's when Jesse Lee breaks in with my favorite gift of the night. I got you a penny, 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 penny full of ice because you told me once you can melt any fucking pussy you want. <laughs> oh, no. Yup. <laughs> um, and he's drunk because he was just at a wedding, correct? I think I think he was at a wedding. He was either at a wedding or some kind of work function, but he is super wasted and kind of steals the show in a really awesome way. Um, He was amazing on this episode. I I loved him so much. Um, Especially a moment we'll get to later. Well, yeah, (laughs) he (laughs) does. He does become. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, we get a our third caller, Katie Amato. J.D. Amato's sister. Is that actually J.D. Amato's sister? Yeah. K.D. Amato? Well, K.T., not K.D. But, like, you but get... I know, it sounds it sounds like J.D., but yeah, no, that's actually his sister, because, hmm. I mean, every, at least everyone's act, everyone acts like she's his sister, so I assume she's actually his sister. There's no indication that she's, like, a UCB performer pretending to be his sister. Yeah. Um, and her best birthday was because her mom would set up scavenger hunts for her birthdays and it was a huge neighborhood wide event that got derailed because there was a ton of snow so everyone had to like which sounds really fun as a kid like run through the snow and try and dig up the clues 
Um, but one of her friends had a broken leg. So they watched their friend navigate with a broken leg and found that really amusing. Uh, so I guess the, the humor of the Chris Gethard show runs in the families of the people who, <laughs> who are running it. Um, She's calling from Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, which prompts Jesse to uh, ask, oh my gosh, did you go to the University of Illinois? The answer is yes. Do you know this random guy? <laughs> that guy didn't go to my wedding, man. <laughs> <laughs> he tries to find out about a guy who he knows went to University of Illinois and ditched his wedding. That might be why I think he was just at a wedding. He wasn't really dressed for a wedding, so I think oh, yeah. it's definitely some kind of... It must have been a work event then, yeah. or something. Or maybe he's just getting drunk. Like that, have, People do that. People do just sure. get drunk. And the show is at 11 o'clock in New York, so that's like a lot of time to just sort of be hanging out. That is very true. Um, and then Shannon asks him, what's on his mind? Yo, it's Monte Cristo cigars versus the Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an excellent human fish style question oh my gosh and of course count of monte cristo won. have you ever had a cigar yes Mm. did did you like it yeah they're okay yeah they're fine oh it tasted like wet mattresses to me i was like why do humans do this like i don't need to have one again (laughs) but it was in texas at south by so it was like oh cool i'm on the road i'll try new things uh-huh. I bought some that were supposed to be like good in the Dominican Republic, and they were not that great. Mine they was just tasted the same as the other thing else. Mine was also from the Dominican Republic, so maybe we have a very small sample size. Very small. <laughs> um, but at this point, all of a sudden, the kid, who, some kid who is with the musical guest, jumps on John Finelli with a fucking bat and yells "Happy birthday, motherfucker!" and then beats banana man on the back like four times with like a hollow bat (laughs) wait wait it was like an inflatable bat yeah well yeah it's like hollow so like okay that is like that is there's something a lot different between hitting someone with a bat and hitting someone with an inflatable bat one of those is like a straight up crime well yes (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah apparently because the wires weren't working so the response is to act in violence i mean that kid was yeah yeah <laughs> wasn't wasn't that the musical axe brother or something yeah i think yeah, i think that was his little brother yeah uh, he's got a shit role model <laughs> yeah yeah basically yeah like, things that run in families <laughs> bethany shares her worst birthday which is genuinely sad when she was 16 years old her entire family forgot her birthday and her friend Kristen bought her a department store cake um, because everyone forgot. Yeah. I thought no one was bringing it up because there was like going to be a really awesome surprise party. Yeah. And then everyone just forgot. Bethany, that story's really sad, and I'm going to ask you to stop remembering details. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Geth. Not only does Bethany re watching this and especially listening to it without seeing the visual, Bethany like starts talking so often in these episodes to just get completely steamrolled by everything else going on and just kind of like quietly shuts up. I'm like, Aww. oh, Beth, <laughs> I love her. But yeah, we get our fourth caller um, who gets the awkward song and it, it's just really awkward. Um, but his story is of when he turned 27, which was his golden birthday. Very important. Golden birthday. He found it very important. Uh, the girl he was dating and who he loved forever bought him concert tickets. But one of the dogs that he dog sits for broke its leg. So he spent the entire birthday at the vet's office uh, instead of going to the concert. Geth wants to talk about something else. Uh, so... The guy asked what Geth wants to talk about. And he's like, <laughs> what? Like this? No, this is my show. <laughs> and, and hangs up on him successfully. Uh, yeah. And that's when Bethany remembers more details. And Chris asks her uh, to just stop. It was very sad. Very sad. I'm glad that Don's birthday was just so much better than Bethany's 16th birthday. 
because uh, right? he got that dark chocolate ricotta tart that he was like so yeah. excited about. He was just ah, uh, that made his birthday. It seems like absolutely. Uh, and you can take it from here, Forrest, because it's your section of the recap. Exactly. And uh, so Jesse points out that so Don's also given a Passover hostess set. And Jesse calls back to Chris's birthday and says, well, unfortunately, too bad the person who gave you that won't be able to make it to your birthday. Because they'll be because they're Jewish. And so they'll Jew be camp. at summer camp. And Don, Don just moves on pretty good. <laughs> With the like, well, Italians and Jewish people are pretty similar. We it's are. Like, joke I can't make. But Caller 5, uh, ha- Caller 5 talked about their worst birthday, where they had just started seeing a guy who called her on her birthday at midnight. She thought it was sweet, but the guy had no idea that it was her birthday and just wanted to hook up. And then her dad gets hospitalized. And so she's in the hospital with her dad all day. That night, the guy calls again. And I said, well, my dad's in the hospital. And he said, oh, sweet. So you have the house all to yourself. Let's hook up. Ooh. You know what? That's a guy who looks like who looks on the brighter side of things. <laughs> <laughs> Always yeah. look on the bright side. Everyone of was giving him a hard time. And he was just trying to find the best in a bad situation. <laughs> <laughs> look, his glass was just half full, you know? Yeah. Um. And then I like that they point out that all the men in her life just completely failed her that night. Yeah. And then Gene pipes in. All right. Little, little trick I learned is if you want a guy to remember your birthday, you tattoo it on your clitoris. <laughs> that happens right before Gene. Oh, yeah. That happens before Gene makes her joke. Yeah. Pipes in. Because Shannon's like, oh, so how long have you and this guy been married? Which I like, thought ter- was Also, that was really which funny. is terrible advice because, like, how the hell am I ever going to find that? Pick <laughs> <laughs> that bee! Pick that bee! <laughs> Ask l- random Gene. I loved that. I loved Gene just shouting, flick that bean. Shannon was like, you stole my catchphrase! <laughs> but it's it's Gene's now. It's Gene's catchphrase. Uh, flick that yeah, bee! Pick that bee! <laughs> <laughs> so then they ask Jesse about his favorite birthday. But Jesse doesn't want to talk about it. Instead, he wants to share the best present he ever received for his birthday, which was Bulls versus Blazers in the NBA playoffs, which was a basketball game for the Super Nintendo. The like it was for Sega Genesis. It was also for Sega Genesis. That was the one that it gave it to him on. Oh yeah, he got the Genesis version. But uh yeah, I mean it I'm sure it was very good for the time and probably doesn't hold up at all. Well, now and probably had little resemblance to basketball. Uh, and then they flash up a photo of Don to embarrass him where he's he has braces and is completely hairless except for the hair on his head because he had waxed his entire, I guess, shaved all his body hair off. And that was apparently very embarrassing from him. And then after that, we got a call from Joe from Queens. Yeah. This is Joe from Queens. I just want to say Sour puts in the middle with the hoodie. You're still looking like you're not happy. I don't know what's wrong with you. He uh, compliments, quote unquote, Gene's cleavage. And yeah. Gene, Gene's just trying to take it as a joke. Yeah. But immediately does that thing that all women do when, well, I think probably all women do. I do this when people randomly start talking about my cleavage, puts her hand over it and picks her shirt up mm-hmm. further to, to cover it more. So yeah, Joe lived up to our, our, our very low expectations of him. But then Jesse surprised us. Really? Next time you call this show, you better fucking be in the building. <laughs> hey, sweetheart, relax. I'm just saying, you got to put on a smile sometime, you know? <laughs> All right, have a good night. Why don't you say that about any other dude in the fucking audience, man? It's a sexist thing to say, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, defender of women. I'm just saying we stand a woke drunk, you know, like he he knocks it out of the park. I love his whole thing. I love when he tells Joe from Queens to read Judith Butler and educate himself. Educate yourself. You're making a fool of yourself on TV. <laughs> <laughs> that I think is legitimately my favorite moment from the entire episode. Do you I know. Think it's nice though because he's just saying that he wants to like you know do. Yeah, he's saying I like your things. cleavage. 
It's well, not like I, well, Gina I mean, really. It's not like we cleavage is sinking down to here. It's not. You know, but yeah, I'm but saying he's not saying, saying like you're <laughs> a smart <laughs> person or you're funny. Ow, what the fuck? Kid? <laughs> what the fuck, man? Who is this? That sound is Morgan, the kid who was with the musical guest, shooting darts at the at everyone on the panel. And Don tries to bond with him because they both had braces. And Chris takes it as Don mocking him. <laughs> and Don's like, no, no, no. I'm just like trying to connect. It's just kind of interesting and weird that while they're confirming for sure with the panel that uh, Joe from Queens is a sexist asshole who's not making funny jokes, uh, that kid busts in. I'm just going to say it. And and leave it right there. You can you can keep going, <laughs> Forrest. Point. That's a, I didn't think of that. Yeah, I didn't think of that too huh. until just now, because I didn't know when we were watching the episode. Uh, anyway. I feel kind of betrayed because the music is really good, and I looked him up, like the music up, while I was listening to this episode because I was like, "Whoa, this is amazing!" And I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna buy his albums," and I'm really excited. And then Forrest googled him. Also, because he thought the music was great, and then that's when we found out that uh, he's just a total asshole, and now I can't really hear his music without thinking about that. But you know who won't betray you? The Lone Cormier Machine. The Lone Cormier Machine will also betray you. No. No, they'll never betray you. I'm going to cut open your scrotum. Oh, oh. that? Okay, except that time. <laughs> um... On this time, we followed a red ball on its rolling adventures. It left bed, went downstairs, and rolled through the French countryside. And we couldn't make out what the French narration said, but we went to our official French expert who said that the narration mostly says, I will arrive. I will return to you. The theme was tractor beam. Yes. And so that makes sense as the theme. And then the ball drives a car, which I found really impressive. Um, to, to be fair, when I, when I asked her to translate it too, she said specifically, it's really hard to understand because his accent is shit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he was fired from uh, that movie. Band of Brothers? Band of Brothers. Connor Ratliff, his uh, first episode of Dead Eyes podcast came out where he tries to unravel the mystery of why he was fired by Tom Hanks from Band of Brothers. And it's really, really good. It's great. You should definitely... John Hamm is on it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's, it's actually, really good. <laughs> it's actually John it's Hamm. Connor Ratliff's made it. And they yeah. have an interesting connection that you'll have to listen to that podcast to find out about. Yeah. Yeah. After the Lone Cornmeal Machine, we got a call from Sean Diston. Smoke weed, son. Smoke weed, son. I like that he repeated it. He got interrupted because of like of something and then just went and did it again. And the TV screen just said weed. With like five With E's. Five E's, yeah. And we learned that the human fish likes weed. And he gave Don a present. The caller gave Don a present, which was the privilege of getting to hear a bong rip over the phone. <laughs> I'm glad they translated that for us. I had no idea what was going on. No, I like, didn't. Did either. he drop his phone? What the noise? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I knew it was him, but I think I think well, he, the, the yeah. noise was him taking a bong rip, but it yeah. just kind of sounds. Oh, like that you didn't okay. distortion. I thought you meant the like no, the thump that interrupted him. You weren't sure what that was. Um. Yeah. But after that, then Rob gave Don the movie French Twist on VHS. Rob Malone. Rob Malone, the world's greatest dancer. I should say his title in full. I yes. apologize, Rob. It's like leaving out that someone is a sir. Or a keeper of the canon. Or a keeper of the canon. Um, French Twist is, according to Rotten Tomatoes, an erotic French comedy. Hmm. In this movie, Laurent is frequently unfaithful to his unsuspecting wife, Lolly. However, when Laurent accuses his wife of having an affair with their lesbian house guest, Marie Jo, his infidelity is revealed. Lolly and Marie Jo do indeed begin a passionate affair, causing many conflicts between the married couple. Was actually forced. It would be pronounced Laurent and uh, Mario. Cool, thank you. That's what I, I was gonna ask. I don't speak it. I don't speak French. I just speak American. So I appreciate the <laughs> correction. Uh, he also got speaking of. I don't speak French. I only speak American. George W. Bush from Texas to the White House. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a documentary? Or it's a, a book? book. It's a book about about W. Wow. Um, and then a sticker with a silhouette of his hair, of Rob's hair and beard, and the puppy whistle. 
which Don really wanted to watch. And then we're back to the musical guest, whose brother runs around fighting people with the bat again until Shannon like starts fighting at first and then takes control of the situation and turns their fighting into dancing. She's just great with kids. Oh, yeah. She's also basically the Chris Gethard show bouncer. Bouncer. <laughs> bouncer, yeah. bouncer. No, she is the TCGS bouncer. In a short with uh, that was written by Josh Sharp, she plays a mom. Uh, it's called The Tape. You should watch it on YouTube. Um, and she plays a mom. And it's at that moment when she's not wearing a hoodie and is just wearing like a button down and mom jeans. I'm like, wow, she really looks like a mom. Can Shannon be my mom? Can she marry my mom and then be my other mom? I don't know that our age difference actually makes sense for momming. I just want I just want Shannon to be my mom, you guys. She could be the comedy mom, like Papa Geth is a comedy dad. I think that I want Don Finelli to be my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut open your scrotum. Oh, oh. That? And with that, we're at my section. <laughs> uh, so next we got a uh, Jesse Lee says he's sobering up a little bit. And Gene asks him if he's had Johnny Walker blue label. You guys wrote new label there. It's blue label. Oh, I, I definitely didn't know it was blue label. That was me. Blue label. Yeah. Which is like a pretty good Johnny Walker. Um, wait, is it? I was my colors, which is her favorite whiskey, which like, come on, like Johnny Walker, really? I don't know. Not what's, only am I a judge of comedy, I'm also a judge of whiskey. What's your favorite whiskey? <laughs> uh, oh, I like um, Laphroaig. Sure. Yeah. I'm a scatch guy. Um, <laughs> that's when Noah puts a morbidly obese woman on the TV um, and Gene yells, she's got cleavage. <laughs> Joe from Queens said the same thing about Gene. Um, then we get a, a an appearance by Phil Jackson. Um, I don't this think is his you're first ready appearance. for this jelly because I'm about oh. to spread some birthday no. love. <laughs> it's his first appearance as doing poetry, but he's been on before, poetry, right? Which, like, honestly, he's one of my favorite segments in 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 this show. He's so good. His poems right. are so funny. I love Phil Jackson. We're going to play um, the whole like two minute poem at the end of this episode. Uh, nice. Yeah. I, I have all, all right. of it. I have the whole thing. <laughs> it's all for you. All right. Then we have um, Bethany doesn't didn't get done a gift. So she gave him a empty Stella Atoire and then gave uh, him a VHS of Jake's Flatter that Rob Malone had given her earlier. <laughs> to give Shannon, to Don. Shannon gave him a Starbucks card, which she said had an unknown value on it. <laughs> I'm going to guess it was less than or equal to four. <laughs> um, oh, next we get uh, Chris's birthday gift, which uh, Chris uh, put on a helmet, put on a backpack full of candy on his front, and. Uh, told Rob Malone that he was going to be a human pinata. No, Here's how this is going to work. That. Yes. That's just Bethany's reaction to that bit. Hey, Bethany is the only person who doesn't want to see Chris get hurt. Oh, Beth. I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, I think including Chris himself, she's the only one who doesn't want that. And the three of us. Yes. <laughs> um. So basically, Chris runs around while Don Finelli blindfold swings a bat at him. And every time he hits, Chris just reaches in the bag and throws candy out into the audience. <laughs> um, while this is going on, while Don is blindfolded, uh, a picture of Don Finelli on the on the screen shows up in a suit with dual earrings. Oh, yeah. Uh, where apparently Don says he was ad- <laughs> auditioning to play a douchebag. Why did you wax your whole body for this picture, man? How do you know I waxed my whole body for this picture? Did you? Yes. <laughs> um, next, we have caller number nine, who was Sandy, who asked the human fish, King Lear versus King Crabs. Uh, King Crabs won, which I think is correct. Shakespeare can fuck off. Um... <laughs> 
Sandy wishes Don a happy birthday. Uh, next we have, oh, we've got the weird guy. Um, he sounded like he was stoned off his gourd while calling. Um, but it, he was, <laughs> so he called in with his worst birthday of all time. And he's throwing his friend a 21st birthday. Friend gets way too drunk, gets kicked out of a, uh, get kicked out of a bar. Um, so they move to, uh, his house and the friend just kind of goes nuts and starts like flipping porch furniture and everything into the street. Um, starts to throw a propane tank, propane tank into the street and the friends stop him. And they're like, all right, we're going to, we got to calm this guy down. So we're going to bring him inside to smoke. So they're passing a joint around and the, the caller pass is passing it to his left and he passes it to a person who he doesn't realize is a cop. <laughs> and the cop just stands there and just like stares them all down as they all run away and forces the guys remaining to clean up the rest of the place. <laughs> um, that's such a know. like. Oh no, not not a terrible birthday. At no. least people showed up. <laughs> um, then we get a, a special treat. I think this is the first time Chris brings Mimi on camera, or she's been on camera before. But this is the first time she she's been hula hooping in the back this entire time, and he brings her on stage. And I think this is the beginning. If correct me if I'm wrong, of of Mimi on the hoops as the kinetic wallpaper. Yeah, I think you're right. Bethany and Jean join in. Uh, Gene is not very good. It's a very um, small hoop. It was it was an extra yeah. small hoop. Mimi was like, "You're gonna have a hard time with this one." Have you tried hula hooping with too small of a hoop, Robin? Oh yeah, it's hard. It's just a lot of hip gyration, which I'm good at. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, an audience member gives Don an edible jockstrap. <laughs> Thank goodness it's not, like, mm-hmm. used. I don't think... I think edible jock straps are kind of a one-time use thing. <laughs> I mean, presumably. I don't think you reuse edible jock straps. I love um, his idea that someone has to eat it off of him, and Chris is just like, no. <laughs> not on the show. Not on the show. And then later, he brings on a dominatrix. <laughs> Yay. Uh, oh, and then next, uh, Murph shows up. Yeah. Uh, Murph yeah. gives Don a vibrator. <laughs> Um, <laughs> which Jesse explains for everyone who doesn't know. Um, you you use that on her clit, bro. Oh, Think that yeah, bee! Yeah. Think that bee! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Joe from the LLC gives Don a uh, the transcript of the fifth episode of TCGS because it was a good episode for Don. Which episode so, was that, Forrest? That's the Wiffleback Gang. Oh, yeah. Which is a, I love good that episode. episode. Yeah, and Chris is like, "Hey, so next time, uh, next time you want to know you're funny, you can read this instead of watching the episode in the archives." <laughs> <laughs> um, we get shit face banned one more time. Um, little kid is shooting people with Nerf darts again. Yada yada. Um, and then Chris signs the show off with a birthday wish to John Finelli. Um, has some interaction with a kid that I couldn't understand. He says the kid is mean and he's not sure why he behaves the way he does. And then the kid says something and he laughs. Yeah. I think he's he like the most shocked laugh on his face, which I think is pretty funny. I think the kid said he's hot blooded is what it sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that kid grew up to be such a shithead. <laughs> um, and then after the credits, we find out that uh cypher sounds from what I assume is the local radio station is going to be on next week. I've, I actually have no idea who Cypher Sounds is, despite having seen this episode. Yeah, Neither do I. It's a local hip-hop station in New York. Cool. And of course... They have a lot of like like pretty notable hip-hop stations there, so I'm not surprised. He's probably a big deal. I think he's like like the old equivalent of Charlemagne the God. What? If you guys know who that is. No. Uh, he's the, there's a hip-hop radio station right now called The Breakfast Club. Yeah, I've heard New of The York. Breakfast Club. Like every single major Democratic co- candidate goes on it now. Yeah, Kamala. Oh. Like a, big deal. Yeah. There's a video with Kamala on it went viral a little bit. Sick. He also comes back multiple times throughout public access on the Night of Zero Laughs 3 and the Night of Zero Laughs 2, which as we've talked about before, 3 comes first. Just like Star Wars, the numbers are weird. <laughs> and then um, he also comes back on a true TV episode, Pandora's Call In Topics. Oh, that was a good one. That was a really good episode. Oh, yeah. It was actually, it was the episode before the dark ritual that got Chris forever linked to the Pizzagate movement. 
<laughs> movement. Conspiracy. <laughs> I don't know why I said movement. It's definitely a weirdo <laughs> conspiracy theory, not a legitimate movement. <laughs> I'm going to cut open your scrotum. Oh, oh. that? I mean, that's probably something they think has happened. I just felt like it was it was fitting for that moment. Yeah. Moving on. But yeah, that's the show. That's episode 12, uh, which means that it's time for our special segments. And we still have like 15 minutes before uh, CGP. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, y'all. We're doing so well. We're think, doing so good. I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make okay, it. I want like five minutes to use the bathroom first, though. So we got like 10 minutes. <laughs> well, then I better get to my segment, <laughs> MV NPC. I love you! My favorite audience member. And tonight, it's the chicken lady. The lady with the anatomical chicken head on her head who gives Dawn wine and chocolate. Because she those things are not comfortable. And she wore that for an hour while watching the episode that's dedication it's also she also gave great gifts so she did she did uh now it's time for that canonical corner over there where canon happens that's all you need to know so gethard's shirt says caroline e anderson is the shit and as he mentioned in lose well he's wearing it because caroline e anderson wrote one of the first positive things about the show he read online. He wrote, I remember the first time I saw someone post praise about our show online. There was a comedy message board known as a special thing that I used to check from time to time. Lo and behold, one day I saw a topic called The Chris Gethard Show. A young lady named Caroline E. Anderson pointed out that, quote, this show isn't perfect, but there's something here. (laughs) (laughs) I sent her a note of thanks and on the next episode wrote on a t-shirt with a black marker, Caroline E. Anderson is the shit. And then after this... To be this, fair, huh? that's how I would describe the earlier episodes. I mean, yeah, yeah no, it's it's spot on. Yeah. Um, and after this episode, Chris mailed her the shirt he wore. And so then cute. And then she wrote a Tumblr post about how much she loves the Chris Gethard show and appreciated the gift. And a link to that Tumblr post will be in the show notes. Yep. And now it's time for our penultimate section Judge Robin's scorecard, all rise for the Honorable Judge Robin. Ah, shit, I left my gavel in the other room. You can just all hit right, your well, cat against the, the computer screen. I'm sorry. Um, all right, hold on a second. So I forgot to take notes during the episode because I was busy playing Magic the Gathering. But I have my <laughs> notes from the original time I watched this episode months ago. So I'm going to try to figure that out. Um, Some real dedication right. here from yeah. the trash people. Uh, s- so Jean got negative one point for bragging about her grades. Uh, Jesse Lee got uh, four points, one for uh, coming up with a versus while drunk. A human fish oh, question educate while drunk. yourself. You're making up for uh, yourself on TV. <laughs> and then Jesse got two more points for standing up for feminism. Fuck yeah! Uh, I loved that. That was great. Uh, Chris got a point for. Uh, I forget one of the question callers. The first thing he said is, let me ask you, do you smoke a ton of weed? Oh, yeah. That was the guy who handed the joint to the cop. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, Shanna got a point for, it's like a kidney bean. I don't know what that's in reference to. Her her clit. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's her yeah. clit. Because nice. Don was like, oh, that tattooing one's birthday on their clit. That would be like tattooing a grain of rice. And she's like, for me, it's like a kidney bean. Pick that bean. Pick that bean. Gene got a point back for yelling she's got cleavage about the model on the screen. Or the woman on the screen. I don't know. She could be a model. Yeah. yeah. And then Shannon got another point for calling the kid who was shooting him with darts Haley Joel Osmond. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, in first place with 911 points, we get the guy whose birthday is on 9-11, because I feel like he needs them. <laughs> uh, so, Robin, would you recommend this episode to be watched by a uh, an old fan of the show, a new fan of the show, someone who is less familiar with the public access episodes? You know, I think this this episode is actually pretty good for everyone. Like, it's it's got some really good colors in it. Um, like, it's pretty funny. The, the the like the there's no big overarching game that falls apart or anything. It's just them having fun with Don Finelli. You don't really need to know who anyone is for it to it to be fun. Yeah, 
I definitely agree. I would also like to uh, I would like to contend one of your points. Mm. I, I want an objection. I think that Jesse Lee should have gotten another point for the following. I got you a penny, 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 penny full of ice because you told me once you can melt any fucking pussy you want. <laughs> That's some gold right there, Robin. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think I just didn't want to give him too many points out of the gate. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, he already had four points. That's a lot of points. I'll give him the fifth one. I'll give him the fifth one. I mean... That was great. It was actually pantyhose that he put ice in. He like went all right, to all right, a corner right, right. store to make this. Sustained. Thank I also you. didn't fully appreciate his delivery of the explanation of the present until this time because I think the way he says it is really funny too. It's very funny. He has great delivery for a wasted person. Yeah. But I would definitely agree with your judgment. I think that everyone should watch this episode. And in fact, I would recommend it to people who have never seen the public access. If they're like curious and they just want to see the first one, I think it's really sweet. And you get a lot of ideas of the dynamics of the cast members. And there's not many inside jokes or anything that you have to have seen previous episodes to get. Yeah. Which means uh, we've reached our final, final segment of the night the tcgs expanded universe places where you can find the people from tcgs right now and by right now we mean the day we're recording this which is wednesday i don't know what the date is josh sharp july 24th july 24th he's about to be on cgp tell us where else we can find people forest keeper of the canon So as you mentioned earlier, Connor Ratliff's podcast, Dead Eyes, had the first episode come out today, and you can find that on the Earwolf Presents feed, and that will be in our show notes. It's the story of how he was fired by America's dad and his quest to find out why. It's really good. It's, yeah, it's really, really good. It also has Janet from The Good Place. Yeah, Darcy Carden. Oh, I love her. Yeah. And then Chris wrote an essay about how he'll explain career suicide to his son, which you can find on Medium. Um, Actual Papa Chris. Actual Papa Chris. Gethard himself as an actual... Wait, that's because he's a father now. Sorry, that took me a second. Yeah, it's because he's a real dad. He's an actual father now. Not just a comedy dad. No. Uh, The frequent musical guest Mal Blum is going to be coming to the Parkside on August 25th. So if you're in the Bay Area, you can... Come see them perform. And then you can also see the birthday boy. Well, you can hear the birthday boy, Don Finelli, on his podcast, The Need to Fail, where he sits down with folks who are at the top of their game to talk about the times they ate shit and their dreams felt more elusive than ever. That's not new. It has over 100 episodes, but since this is his birthday, it felt like a good time to highlight it. That's awesome. I actually didn't know about that. You probably told me when you looked this up and I was just like went not paying attention yeah probably i mean i don't know you weren't actually (laughs) you weren't in the you weren't in the room when i found it so i think this is your first time hearing about that podcast well that sounds really cool it sounds very gethered yeah i love i do love how close the ethos of that is to lose well yeah which is pretty great. We came in under the line, y'all. We have exactly seven minutes until CGP, Josh Sharp. He's super, super funny. He wrote and is in a lot of UCB comedy uh, shorts on YouTube. And so y'all should watch them. And we hope that you have enjoyed this episode. We hope that you enjoy CGP. And we hope that you watch the Don Finelli episode. I'm going to play us out to a song about dawn and then uh phil jackson's poem so it's going to be another like four minutes or so that you can just absolutely turn this off right now if you're a bad person who isn't a real fan you have green eyes you live in new jersey and you seduce girls by playing them dave matthews on guitar you have black hair it's all over your body and when it comes to pissing in your pants well you're the champ and your name is don finelli don finelli don finelli and your dad's name is don finelli don finelli don finelli and your mom's name is donna finelli don finelli don finelli and your name is don finelli thank you i don't think you're ready 
for this jelly. Cause I'm about to spread some birthday love for my mother smucker Don Finelli. Don! Don Finelli nice. Don! Don Finelli cold as ice. Don! Don Finelli is a chef. Don! Don Finelli cooks rice. Don! I just did it on your own, thank you. <laughs> With the side of that spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Don Finelli has mind control. He's Star Wars, like a jetty. <laughs> so throw some confetti. Or if you're rich, give the man a gift. Don! Like a Maserati. Because Don Finetti is the man of the hour. Any classic like a black and white film, film now. No one man should have all that power. Don! Don! So here you go, Don. I got you a bag a flower. Oh, thanks, man. Look at that. Thanks, dude. A bag of flowers.